Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Grumman Pilot's YouTube channel. And today we're going to talk about the steps you need to follow to remove a cylinder from an engine so that it can be repaired. So stay tuned for some more fun. So we would like to ask you please subscribe, hit the like button, and hit the notify to stay current with our content. So here's the cylinder that we've removed from the airplane. It's just sitting on the table here to be photographed. And we've labeled the intake and the exhaust. And again, this is off of a Tiger, the O360A4K. But as the part of removing it, what we're going to be doing is, you'll notice on the left up there where the rocker goes through, and my finger's pointing right now, that is a 7 16 inch Harbor Freight socket that fits right through the bore and allows you to retain the rocker arm while you move the pin out on the other side then you can remove one rocker and then you can slide it the other way and remove the other rocker and that gets rid of the rockers and that allows you to pull out the push rods and then you can take the push rod tubes and remove all that hardware you also want to remove all the hardware the baffle bolts uh, the rocker cover here is off as well as the gasket but as you remove them all and then once you get down to the lifter bodies we're going to be uh, bleeding the lifter so when they go back in we don't have to worry about that and then once it's all back together but as part of this removal once we have the rockers and the push rod tubes all removed then we're going to go after the uh, cylinder base nuts we're going to be loosening the eight of them in a certain pattern to remove the cylinder from the engine but before we do that the intake is off and the exhaust is off as well as the oil return tube and the primer line those have all been removed off the cylinder so that we can get the push rods out now here comes one of the push rods and a little bit of blackness here and let's talk about on the valves for just a minute uh, we have valve springs and we have two valve springs and if you look at them on the internal side one is coiled one way and one is coiled in the other way and the reason for this is is so that the coils can't interfere with the with each other because they're orthogonal in their coils so when you compress them there's no jamming in there the other reason why you have two springs in there if you had a single spring there's a possibility of a harmonic with the spring and the engine running so that a valve would float wouldn't fully open wouldn't fully close would be detrimental to the running of the engine so with two valves that resonant frequency will never um, be the same when you have dual valve springs like this. That's why you have them on cars. That's why you have them on airplanes. So that explains the dual um, spring concept that we have in our engines. Now as we move on to this, stand by. By the way, the springs that I'm using here are the cat toys for the new kittens. There is no way I could compress real steel springs like that in my fingers to give the idea of how they work in a real valve but as we go to the shot coming up next of the real spring you'll see that you'll see why I used the little plastic toy ones to demonstrate this purpose so here we are we're going to be removing the other rocker now and that's going to allow us to get at the uh, push rod tubes um, nothing mystical about this by the way as you're doing part of this we do put a piece of paper on the floor we do mark it intake and exhaust and we organize all the pieces so that we can keep track of them when we go back for reassembly and the reason for this is your push rods can be of different sizes or whatever is needed and you want to make sure they go back on the right side so you get the proper dry valve clearance on your things now here's the trick for taking out the push rod tube we wrap it with a rag that gives it a nice circular grip on the push rod tube and then we just pull it towards the uh, open end of the cylinder and it pops right out and then we retain all the gaskets and sometimes depending upon the condition of the gasket they can be replaced but here's your wrapping the um, rag around the uh, push rod tube so that you can break loose the seal you'll notice that seal when you go to push the push rod tube back on later with the gasket it will slide and snap right into place and be firmly affixed and then you can put all the locking hardware in place so now that these are out now we're going to fish out the push rod tubes and then and the uh, lifters are coming out and now the cylinder base nuts have been removed and you'll notice the rag on the bottom edge of that cylinder opening that's so that you don't nick it with the connecting rod nor you do anything to the connecting rod and now that we have the um, cylinder off of the engine we can shine a light in there and there's the exhaust valve that was leaking 
you can see that it's gotten pretty darn hot. You can also see the reflection in the walls of the cylinder. That tells us that there's nothing going on with the piston rings, that this was purely an exhaust valve problem. And that's why we were only getting 12 PSI on the valve. So it had to come off and it had to go to the repair shop. And the shop was nice enough to repair it overnight and it's now going to go back on the airplane and the reassembly will be the reverse of this disassembly process but while we have it off we wanted to take a look at the condition of the valve that gives us some information to give to the uh, cylinder shop as well as for our own edification and then here you can see a picture of a normal exhaust valve from another engine that has not been running way lean and it's also been using um, 100 low lead here and as you can see here's another valve demonstrating again what a normal one looks like you want to watch out for that red that is um, a lot of heat going into the valve and the valve seat will be worn too so that's how you look at the inside of the engine what you're looking for is a nice ash like this and uh, there's nothing wrong with this valve it's just got a light coating on it and uh, way it goes on the exhaust side for the uh, aircraft so looking inside your engine at the valves can be a uh, very interesting and can give you something about the health of your engine and it's not every day that you have to remove a cylinder from an airplane we were lucky that it was the number two cylinder that's the front one so we didn't have to fight with all the baffling in the back and then here's a quick tip when you've got the exhaust off you can just take those are the cotter pens for the main wheels and we just use them as a bobby pen basically to hold the exhaust gas on the stud in place and then once you get the exhaust and the nut start you can pop those right out and then here is the cylinder finally off of the airplane there's the intake side and we had a little shot there of the crustiness going on inside the exhaust but this is what the cylinder looks like off the airplane again it went off to the shop was repaired overnight and it's back on the airplane now ready for a test run tomorrow but so let me take a brief moment here to apologize for some of the camera shots. It's been pretty busy. We didn't have our normal tripod. It was being handheld as we're trying to remove a cylinder off. So again, once again, I apologize for some of the camera angles and hope it doesn't make you too dizzy. We'll try to do better in the future. And again, thanks for watching, folks. And now let's close it out. It's nice that these cylinders can do like that. So we hope you found all this useful and informative. Hope you don't have to pull a cylinder on your Grumman and have a great day flying it. Thanks for watching. And in addition, there's a little treat about three o'clock in the morning when I'm doing web work and other stuff. Here's my cat coming down, playing with a mouse and meowing and just having a good time with me in the wee hours of the night. So I thought I'd throw this into you as a little treat. Y'all please enjoy.